you're probably advertising on Google right now. If you don't, then why are you even watching this channel? But have you actually considered advertising on Bing using Microsoft Ads? Because it could be a good way to get some additional volume through your campaigns and basically replicate the success you've had on Google and get more sales and more conversions. What's not to like? But the problem is, even though on Microsoft you are running search campaigns the same way you are on Google, they don't work in exactly the same way. And even though many of the factors are transferable between both search engines, today what I want to share with you is the differences between the two, because there are actually some advantages to running ads on Bing compared to Google. But of course, Google is much bigger. It's the primary place you want to advertise. So let's get into it. Let's find out what Microsoft advertising on Bing can offer your business. First of all, let's start with the volume piece. So we know, of course, Bing is a smaller search engine than Google, but just how small is it? Well, you can expect anywhere between 3 to 8% of the traffic you get on Google. Now, of course, this is going to be niche dependent. Some niches will have a higher level of traffic on Bing than 8% or even 5%, but other areas of the businesses that you work within might have even less than that 3% on Bing. It's all dependent on what you're advertising and who you're advertising to. For example, in my country, the UK, Bing can give you about 4% of the traffic you'd expect on Google, whereas in the US, they're much more open to Bing and you can expect double that with around 8% of the traffic you would expect from Google coming from the Bing search engine and its partners. But I've actually seen it go as high as 10% of the volume I'm getting on Google in particularly the B2B sector because of course with a B2B sector you're, you're advertising to businesses and quite often businesses have a very strict IT policy when the staff are working at their workstations and by default they often have the Edge browser in installed and use only Microsoft's suite of software. So you get some additional searches in the B2B space, usually from people at work looking for business services and they default to Bing. So that's a small example there. The second thing to consider is of course you can import your campaigns from Google into Microsoft ads, which makes life a lot easier because Microsoft knows the situation. They know Google are the biggest search engine around and they're not going to compete with them, even though they've been trying for at least a decade to try and get some market share is not really happened. So as a result, they've basically accepted their fate and now they're in a position where they have an import tool that focuses solely on replicating your success on Google by importing your Google campaigns and bringing them over to Microsoft. This literally means bringing across everything, including keywords, ads, targeting, everything. There are some slight differences between how Bing targets and how Google targets, but there are basically going to be no differences between the two when you import your campaigns. Any settings you have on Google that can't be replicated, for example, I know for sure that Google has a more granular targeting ability than Microsoft. It will give you a warning and you can also do some things to make sure there are no issues when you transfer things across. Because you can do things like find and replace, which is very useful if you're using a tracking template in Google and you're referencing a source of traffic like Google CPC, you can change that to Microsoft CPC or Bing CPC just to make sure your analytics aren't screwed up by, by moving campaigns from Google over to Microsoft. But of course, you can replace other areas as well. If you think there's areas on Google that can't be replicated on Bing in terms of targeting, you can make those changes within the import tool itself and make sure that it's a completely harmonious transfer across, that you're not going to run into any issues when advertising. The good thing about the import tool is actually it can synchronize on a schedule. So every day you could import all of the changes you make on your Google account into your Microsoft Bing account. And that means that you don't have to go in twice if you're seeing bad traffic on Google, then going across to Bing and Microsoft to replicate the, the negative keywords you might add to a campaign. Or if you're changing text ads on Google, you don't have to jump back over across to Microsoft and make those changes, which is very handy. But it's not always the best thing, and my next point on the difference between these two platforms will tell you why. Because the traffic quality you get on Microsoft is going to be worse than that on Google. Now, I don't mean that the people searching on Microsoft are a worse quality of user, and we'll get onto that very shortly, so stay to the end because that is a very interesting point. But what I mean is the matching quality of search term to keyword, even taking into consideration keyword match type, is going to be worse on Microsoft. They just don't do a good enough job of matching your search terms to your keywords, and the close variants go crazy. So on Google, you might be advertising using phrase match and you have a negative keyword list, but that negative keyword list is basically 
completed because you've optimized the traffic quality very well. You transfer that campaign over to Microsoft, you will see what happens. You suddenly realize you need a ton more negative keywords to add to your Microsoft campaign because they do a worse job at matching keywords. So of course, as I say, you add more negative keywords, but you also have to consider your keyword match type differences as well. If you're running broad on Google, you might want to go to phrase on Microsoft. If you're running phrase on Google, you might want to go exact on Microsoft. And if you're exact on Google already, you definitely want to stay on exact on Microsoft because their matching quality just isn't as good as Google, which is saying something Something because Google is wild at matching search terms at the moment, but that highlights how important this point is. So now we're going to get to the interesting part because this is where Microsoft has an advantage over Bing because Microsoft has two ad extensions or now known, known as assets on Google. They have two more of these that Google doesn't use that you can use on Microsoft, which is really interesting. These are a flyer extension and an action extension. Now these two extensions you can use on Microsoft don't exist on Google, but let's understand what they are. So the flyer extension is exactly what you think it would be. It allows you to create a digitalized version of a flyer like you'd get in the mail from a company with promotions and offers. So you of course have your content, your image, your offer, and it allows you to click through on the website of the user to see the actual offer on site. So when they click the flyer, they go to the offer linked to the flyer and you have to have a landing page dedicated to the offer. So that's kind of how it works. But the unfortunate thing, or maybe fortunate depending on where you are, is that this only works in the United States currently. You cannot use the flyer extension anywhere else in the world but the US. They get all the cool stuff. So the next one I mentioned is an action extension, which basically allows you to create a call to action button that can show within your ads, which is really, really cool because you can select from a predetermined list of 60 actions, or maybe even more than that, with things like book now, get a quote, call now. And basically you can link that button to a landing page on your site that is linked to that potential action. So if you have a book now button, you can link that person straight to the booking page. So it's a good way to get increased actions on your website based on what you want the user to actually achieve on site as your conversion. A really interesting ad extension that I think Google should replicate, but just out of principle, Google probably won't do this because Bing is the little brother, Google is the big brother, and which big brother copies their little brother? Let's be honest. Another key differentiator between Google and Bing is that Bing has a very extensive partner network. Now, the other thing as well as I'd say is you have to treat Bing's partner network very differently to Google's because the reason Google has no need for a partner network is because Google is such a huge search engine. So many searches take place on it, so it doesn't really need the partners. And in fact, the volume you get from partners on Google is going to be very minimal compared to the volume you get from the Google search engine itself. But because Microsoft Bing is a much smaller search engine, it means that you kind of have to use partners to get any kind of good volume through your campaigns, at least in the initial stages. But the good news is these partners are mostly search engines you've probably already heard of. They were massive household names back in the day. I'm talking about things like MSN, Yahoo, and of course, AOL as well. These were the kind of major players back in the day. They have a lot of reputation. People still to this day use them and they can give your campaigns additional volume from search that you probably need because Bing is a very small search engine. They also work with more niche search engines as well, like DuckDuckGo, if you've heard of them. They're a search engine focused on user privacy, so they don't track users under any circumstances. And then Ecosia, which is a search engine focused on environmental endeavors, which means the more you use it, the more trees they plant. So a couple of cool ones there as well, but overall, you have to treat the Bing partner network different to how you would treat Google because you need the volume and many of these partners are actually quite well-known search engines that you want to test ads on anyway. So don't be too harsh on the partners like you would on Google. And my final point is about the user of Bing compared to the user of Google. Now, as you can imagine, the user of Bing skews a bit older because the older demographic don't really not necessarily know how to change browser and download Chrome but they just don't do it. They just see it as the internet. They just access the internet. And I don't mean this in an insulting way that a lot of older people don't know what they're doing. Of course they do. I work with people every day who download Chrome, who download crazy stuff and other browsers who know how to use the internet. But a lot of people don't. They don't change because as long as they can access the internet, they're fine. And a lot of Bing's users are going to fit into that category, which means 
they are going to skew older, which of course means they're demographically going to have more disposable income, which has a knock-on effect on your campaigns. So don't be too surprised if you see a higher conversion rate or a higher average order value on Bing, because of course, as I say, that user is a bit older, they'll have a bit more money, and they'll probably convert at a higher rate as well as a result of the demographical differences. Google skews a bit younger, so of course people who are younger typically have less money, and it means they have less disposable income, which means conversion rates can be a bit lower than Bing. This isn't a rule, this is not gospel, it's just based on things I've seen in multiple campaigns, usually the e-commerce space, you get a, a lot less volume, but in actual fact, the user is going to be higher converting. So again, this goes to show that Bing is not a search engine to be sniffed at, but it's something you should consider in all of your campaigns when running ads on Google, you should be testing them on Bing as well. This is a key reason for that. Oh, one more bonus point before we go, because there's one big difference between these two platforms, and that is their approach to using AI. Google, of course, are copying Microsoft with regards to AI because Microsoft are partnered with OpenAI, who have ChatGPT, which meant they were way ahead of Google in this particular regard. Google were caught sleeping. They've tried to catch up with Gemini, which is their AI system, and they've introduced Gemini into their Google Ads campaign setup. I did a video covering how bad this was. It's not good AI. It didn't really work. I might revisit it in future. But Microsoft are using ChatGPT to power their AI for campaign setup. It is a little bit better. You actually get some outputs and you can actually complete ads. But the content just isn't that good. But the main thing I want to say is Google makes it optional whether or not you want to use AI in your campaign setup. You can actually say, yes, I do or no, I don't. Microsoft makes it mandatory. You have to go through a process of seeing an AI output in your ads when you're creating a campaign from scratch. They basically force you to use it. So what ends up happening is it populates all of your headlines and descriptions with AI-based content based on the URL you put in to your ads, and then you end up having to delete them all. Luckily, they've put a button in that can delete them all for you in one click, but ultimately the content just isn't that good. But it's interesting to see that they're both trying to approach AI in the ad setup process. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoy this video. If you're not running ads on Bing yet, let me know in the comments below. Let me know what kind of results you're currently getting if you're running ads on Microsoft. I'll be more than happy to discuss it with you. Let me know in the comments. I reply to pretty much all comments on all of my videos. Like this video if you like it. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to check out the other content across the channel and I'll see you guys on the next video.